uh, uh, the homework was given and homework in the last session and the homework was related to uh, the case studies and so i hope that you have come prepared for the case studies so first we will discuss those case studies and then uh, we will start with the second unit so anyone who has come prepared, please unmute. Anyone who has come prepared for the case studies. Because case studies are not, which can be taught one way. Otherwise, that will not be a case study. The method of case study teaching requires discussion to take place. Discussion means two-way process. So if you have come prepared, any one of you can unmute and you can start with the session. The first case which we are uh, going to discuss is related to the Kingfisher Airlines and then we will go for the Chanda Kocher. So anyone who has come prepared? So no one has come prepared. Very good. So instead of wasting time, what we will do is we will start with the second unit. And second unit is related to committee management. Committee management here is the various committee which are created by the board of directors what those committees are which are the committees which are considered as statutory committees or compulsory committees which are to be created in each and every organization as well as we will be discussing some of the non statutory committees also so statutory is compulsory non statutory is not compulsory so there are four compulsory committees which every organization or every board of directors should constitute these four committees. What are those committees that we will be discussing? In brief, we had discussed in the first unit itself when we were talking about the role of corporate governance in India as well as when we were discussing about the contribution of various committees in the field of corporate governance in India. JJ Rani committee we had discussed, Kamar Mangalam Birla committee we had discussed. Then we had discussed the OECD guidelines, we had discussed the Cadbury committee. In those committees also, in brief, uh, we had talked about the committees. For example, the audit committee we had talked about. Nomination and remuneration committee we had talked about. So these are some of the in brief we had talked about in the first unit. Now we will be talking in detail about what these committees are. So committees function in accordance with the terms of reference established by the board. Meaning of it is very simple. As the board is the authority which constitutes, which appoints these committees. The role and responsibility of the committee as well as of the committee members is finalized by the board of directors of the organization. Second one, the board committee may be standing committee or ad hoc committee that ceases when the activities are completed. Now, it can be a committee which is constituted for time being or it can be a committee which is constituted permanently. Permanently, it doesn't mean that once it is appointed, it will remain as it is for a period of say more than 5 years, 10 years, 15 years or maybe more than that. Every committee has a period of existence also. That for how many years that committee will work? 
whether it will be there for one year, three year or five years. That is to be again decided by the board of directors, which is appointing authority of these committees. Next one is the standing committee should include the articles or bylaws. Now here we are talking about <coughs> sorry. Here we are talking about that while constituting the committees, the four committees which are considered as the statutory committees, a reference should be given that or the provisions which are mentioned under various laws, particularly the Companies Law 2013, that should be mentioned. And this constitution of committees should be in accordance to the bylaws or to the clauses, provisions of the Companies Law 2013. Next is committees recommend policy for approval by the entire board. Again, very simple. When the committee is to be constituted, the constitution of the committee, that means the appointment of members as well as the chairman of the committee is to be passed is to be sanctioned, is to be approved by the entire board of directors of the organization. Committees make full use of board members' expertise, time and commitment and ensure diversity of opinions on the board. Again, very simple and very, appointment, uh, very important, which talks about that committees make use of full use of board members' expertise. Now, who will be the members of these committees? Now, these committee members or the chairman of the committee, they are appointed on the basis of their knowledge, on the basis of their expertise in that particular field. To use the expertise of a board member to the fullest, the company decides or the board of directors decides that this particular person should be part of a particular committee where his or her expertise can be fully utilized for the benefit of the organization. Now, for example, if audit committee is to be constituted. Now, for audit committee, if three members are necessary, and the board is having, say, a strength of, say, 14 members. 14 members are there in the board of directors. Out of these 14 members, now the board of directors have to appoint three members in the audit committee. Now, among these 14, who will be the three members who can be appointed as members in the audit committee? Now, the board will check the expertise of all the 14 members. And then they will shortlist or then they will finalize that who among these 14, who are the three most experienced, most expert people in the field of finance or in the auditing. Now, why they are selecting among 14 only these three people who are having most expertise in the field of finance or audit? Now, the reason is very simple. Reason is so that their expertise can be fully utilized for the benefit of the organization. It should not happen. The three members are there. Out of these three members, one is from the finance background, the other one is from the HR background, the other one is from 
the marketing background so only one is having a good expertise in the field of audit the other two they are not as good as the person as the finance person now here we cannot say that just to promote diversity because the next is that to ensure diversity of opinion just to promote diversity that people should be coming from different backgrounds if they come from different background the organization will be able to promote diversity so that is not promoting diversity promoting diversity means that different people from the same field or who are having the same expertise in that field they should be appointed in that particular committee if the organization if the board of directors want to utilize their full expertise for the benefit of the organization so that is the meaning of this point next one is minutes should be recorded for all the committee meetings and final minutes are required to be placed before the board now minutes means some of you might be aware of that what is the meaning of minutes here here minutes means minutes of meeting and minutes of meeting means that when the meeting is taking place the discussions which are going on and on the basis of those discussions if important decisions are being taken those important points related to discussion and all the important decisions that have been taken in the meeting they are supposed to be recorded and recording of important points covered in the meeting and the important decisions taken in the meeting is known as recording of minutes of meeting so that at the time of auditing or when the performance evaluation is taken up for the committees or for the entire board of directors it will be easier for the people who are involved in evaluation part to evaluate the performance of the board as well as the performance of the as well as the performance of the uh, committee and that is the reason why every meeting has to be there has to be minutes of meeting for every meeting not only for evaluation purpose but for statutory purpose also because under uh, various provisions of companies act it is mandatory it is compulsory that all the board meeting are to be recorded so minutes of meeting are to be prepared that meeting was conducted by the board of directors so many directors were involved in the board meeting on this particular date at this particular time the venue was this following points were discussed in the meeting and on the on these on the basis of these discussion the following decisions were taken up during the meeting and at the end the name the designation of all the participating directors of the meeting in the meeting that is to be mentioned and they should sign against their name so that is the meaning of recording of minutes of meeting all right so minutes of meeting should be recorded for all the committee meetings and final minutes are required to be placed before the board now for example audit committee has conducted five meetings or maybe six meetings or maybe four meetings now when a final minutes of meeting is to be shared with the entire board in brief suppose six meetings have taken place so far a report is to be prepared 
on the basis of those six meetings that six meetings have been conducted by the audit committee on the following dates on meeting number 1 these many members were present on meeting 2 these many members were present on meeting 6 these many members were present signatures and everything should be taken up and meeting 1 these points were discussed these decisions were taken up meeting 2 these points were discussed and these decisions were taken up and meeting 6 again points to be discussed and decisions were taken so that is called as the final meeting so these are the general rules and regulations now we will start with the committees now committees which are mandatory mandatory means compulsory under the companies act 2013 that we are going to discuss now the first committee is audit committee second we are going to discuss is nomination and remuneration committee the third one which we will take up for discussion is corporate social responsibility committee and the fourth one we will discuss is the stakeholders relationship committee so these are the four committees which we are going to discuss We will start with the first, that is the audit committee. Now, the meaning of the audit committee. All the public companies with a paid up capital of 10 crore rupees or more. Then, all the public companies having a turnover of 100 crore or more third is all the public companies having an aggregate outstanding loan or borrowings or debentures or deposits exceeding 50 crore rupees or more the paid up share capital or turnover or outstanding loan borrowing or debentures or deposits as the case may be as existing on the date of last audited financial statement shall be taken into account for the purpose of this rule. Now we are saying that audit committee is mandatory. But is it mandatory to all the organization which are there in the, in, uh, in the country? So no, there are certain rules. Now if an organization fits into any of the three rules, then it becomes essential, mandatory for the organization to constitute a audit committee. It is compulsory for the organization. If it doesn't fit into these three parameters, then it is not compulsory. So although it is saying that it is mandatory, it doesn't mean that it is mandatory to each and every organization which is existing in the country. It is mandatory to the organization which fulfills any of the three criteria which is shown in the slide. If any organization fulfills the, this criteria, then it becomes compulsory for the organization. Now that was that which are the organizations which are included in the purview of mandatory audit committee that we had discussed in the previous slide. Now we will talking about the composition of the audit committee. The composition of the audit committee. First point is minimum of three directors with independent directors forming the majority. Now in the coming session, we will be discussing about the types of directors. There we will be discussing various directors. One of the type of director we will be discussing is the independent director also. In brief, we had discussed in the first unit, independent as the name itself suggests that who is independent, who is not dependent on the organization or who is not controlled directly by the organization or 
who is not involved in the day to day functioning of the organization or who is not having stakes in the organization so these four points should explain the meaning of independent directors that the person is independent director so executive directors we have talked about and we had also discussed about the independent director so independent director so minimum of three directors with independent directors forming the majority so what the first criteria or the first requirement is yeah, how many members should be included in the audit committee? So minimum, they have said, okay, minimum it has to be three. Then which three directors can be included in the board of directors? That is also explained. That majority of the directors should be independent directors. The meaning is very simple. Now, if the organization has appointed three directors, majority means that at least two directors should be independent directors. So, only one director can be part of the board of directors, uh, sorry, uh, the audit committee can be a executive director. Remaining two members have to be the independent directors who are not involved in the day-to-day -day functioning of the organization, who are not directly controlled by the organization or who are not having stake in the organization. Stake in the organization means they are not uh, having uh, shares in their name of a particular quantity. Then these people can be considered as independent directors. Suppose if a four, because they have mentioned a minimum three should be there. Now, if the organization decides that instead of minimum three, they will appoint four directors in the audit committee, then, then also the rule is same that majority should be independent directors. Now, if two directors are appointed from the executive director and two directors are appointed from the independent director. Can we say that this constitution of audit committee is as per the provisions of law or as per the provisions of Companies Act 2013? So the answer is no. Because it talks about majority. So majority has to be more than 50%. So even if four directors are included in the audit committee, it simply means that the division should be three plus one. Three from the independent directors, one from the executive director. Then only we can say that it is as per the provisions of Companies Act because the provision says majority of the directors should be independent directors. It doesn't talk about that it should be equal. 50% should be part of independent directors. 50% should consist of executive directors. So when it talks about majority, it talks about most of the members should be from the independent directors. Next is all members of the audit committee shall be financially literate and at least one member shall have accounting or related financial management expertise. Now, the second point, all members of the audit committee shall be financially literate. Financially literate. Financially literate means they should be aware of what is the, at least the basic concepts of accounting basic concepts of financial management if not expert in that field what is credit what is debit 
how a balance sheet is prepared how a balance sheet is checked how a balance sheet is evaluated that much of knowledge should be with all the members who are part of the audit committee it should not happen that yes independent directors are there but they are not able to read the balance sheet or understand the balance sheet then these people are or will not be considered as people who are financially literate so financially literate means who are able to read and understand the financial statements or the balance sheets and the second part of this is at least one member shall have accounting related or financial management expertise so two members if three are there then it is expected that two members should have a good knowledge and one of the members should have expertise expertise means he should be an expert who can find out very easily whether there is any uh, defect in preparation of financial statements whether there is any irregularity in preparing of the uh, balance sheet of the organization so that one person has to be expert the other two person or other members can be financially literate but everyone has to be financially literate next is the chairman of the audit committee shall be an independent director very important why it has been made necessary that the chairman of the audit committee has to be independent director and the reason is because chairman is the highest authority of that particular committee that audit committee so he will be having the highest authority of approving the financial statements approving the budgets approving the balance sheets so if two directors are there and who they are independent directors and one director who is an executive director if he is designated as the chairman of the audit committee then the objective of appointing majority of independent directors in the audit committee will not get fulfilled and the reason is that if chairman is the executive director then he will have more authority even if the members have suggested as a chairman he will have that authority whether to accept that suggestion or not to see to that the objective of the companies act or objective of appointing more independent directors gets fulfilled this particular point is categorically mentioned in the provisions of companies act that when the chairman is to be appointed of audit committee it has to be seen that the committee chairman should be an independent director he should not be a executive director then only the purpose the objectives of appointing majority of independent directors in the audit committee will be achieved next is the chairman of the audit committee shall be present at annual gathering to answer shareholders qu queries apart from being present for all the audit meeting it is necessary for the chairman of the audit committee to remain present for the annual general board meeting and answer the queries of the shareholders we all are aware that at the time of the general board meeting it's an open forum where the company's financial
स्टेटमेंट्स दी फाइनेंशियल हेल्थ और बैलेंस शीट और द फिगर्स रिलेटेड टू फाइनेंस दे आर शोन टू जनरल पब्लिक और द जनरल शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हेयर अ फ्री हैंड इज गिवन टू दी शेयर होल्डर्स हु आर प्रेजेंट for that particular meeting they can go ahead and they can ask question related to financial capacity of the organization it is expected that these questions are to be answered by the chairman of the audit committee so it is compulsory for the chairman of the audit committee to remain present for that particular meeting next is the company secretary shall act as secretary to the committee the company secretary again i hope that everyone is aware of the meaning of company secretary here we are not talking about the secretary who is appointed for the assistance or for giving assistance to the general manager or to the manager or to the managing director but company secretary is considered as one of the highest position in the organization ca we have heard as well as cs so company secretary is the person who takes care of all the legal requirements which are to be fulfilled by the organization whether the organization is fulfilling those requirements or not it is the responsibility of company secretary there are various provisions which are to be fulfilled by each and every organization according to the companies act 2013 it is assumed that the ceo of the organization or managing director of the organization or general manager of the organization may or may not be financially literate or financially very sound to understand the importance of all these provisions their clauses sub clauses articles and that is the reason why every organization has to it is compulsory for the organization to appoint a person at the highest level and the designation of the person is cs company secretary now the job of the company secretary is that he will take care of or he will act as the secretary to the committee which committee audit committee why he is uh, regarded as or he will be working as the secretary for this committee because this committee deals with the financial aspect and finance is considered as blood of the organization because we have seen so many scams taking place so many frauds taking place and among those frauds all or most of the frauds are related to financial irregularities now to minimize these financial irregularities this provision is included that a person who is company secretary or who is working as company secretary in the organization he should be involved in the functioning of the audit committee also so a responsibility is given to the company secretary that he or she shall act uh, shall act as uh, the secretary to the audit committee now we will move on to the meetings of the committee how many meetings are to be conducted that is also mentioned in the act when these meetings are to be conducted that is also mentioned so that we are going to discuss now so the first one is audit committee should meet at least four times in one year 
and not more than four months shall elapse between two meetings. So here in the first point itself, two things are clear. The first one is that how many meetings are to be conducted by the audit committee? One, two, three or four or five or six, how many meetings? So the provisions of Companies Act 2013 mentions very clearly that at least minimum four meetings are to be conducted in one year. More than that, it is welcome. It is not that there is a clause in Companies Act which says that only four meetings, not more than four meetings. This is not used, not more than four meetings. What is used is minimum four meetings, at least four meetings. When at least four meetings we are saying, then it is up to the audit committee. It can meet more also, but at least four times they have to meet. They can meet five times, they can meet six times, they can meet more times also. That is acceptable. But they cannot meet three times in one year. It is not accepted that one year the committee has met six times. So in the next year they have decided that we will meet only two times this year. That is not accepted at all. Even if the committee is constituted for a period of five years, every year is considered as separate year. So every year is considered separately. So every year, how many meetings? As per law, it says at least four meetings. More, there is no numbers fixed. It is up to the audit committee. They can meet uh, five times. They can meet six times. They can meet more times also in one year. But at least four times they have to meet. That is the first part. Now the next part is that when the meeting should take place, what should be the gap between two meetings? That is also mentioned. It is not expected or it is not acceptable also that the audit committee decides that we will meet in the month of January, February, March and April and that's it. Or we will meet in the month of January, then we will meet in the month of March, then we will meet in the month of April, and then we will meet in the month of June. So they have mentioned very clearly that how many months gap should be there. So not more than four months shall elapse. So we have to, the committee has to see to it that January, February, they have conducted two meetings and then they decide that, okay, next meeting we will conduct in the month of September. Not acceptable. So that is mentioned. Ki between two meetings, how much gap should be there? That also should be considered by the audit committee. Next is the quorum shall be either two members or one third of the members of the audit committee, whichever is greater, but there should be minimum two independent directors or members present. Again, very important, quorum. Now, the meaning of quorum is that when we can say that meeting is or meeting can be considered as a valid meeting. Quorum means how many members should be present for the meeting to make the meeting a valid meeting. That is also mentioned. Because number of time, what happens is that if three members are there in the audit committee, on the day of meeting, because of some personal emergency, wife is not feeling well, daughter or son is not feeling well, or relative is no more, or one of the close relative has met with an accident, or the member has met with an accident. And because of this particular emergency, the member is unable to attend the audit meeting. 
Now, in this, that situation, whether the meeting will be a valid meeting or meeting will be called as an invalid meeting, for that, we should understand what should be the quorum for that particular meeting. And quorum for that particular meeting, they have mentioned, the quorum shall be either two members or one third member of the audit committee, whichever is greater. That is the first part. If three members are there, how many members should be present to make a meeting valid meeting? So they have mentioned here that a minimum two members or minimum one third, whichever is greater, whichever is higher. That is the first part. That if the audit committee consists of three members, the quorum for a valid, which will make the committee meeting a valid meeting, says that at least two members should be present among the three. One member, while coming to the meeting place, he met with an accident, so he cannot be he cannot join the meeting on that particular day. Still, the meeting can be called as a valid meeting. Why? Because the quorum is fulfilled. And the quorum says that minimum two members, if three members are in the committee, uh, consists of the uh, audit committee. That is the first part. Now, the second part is very interesting. And the second part says is, but there should be minimum two independent directors present. Now, in the first example, we have seen that there is one audit committee which consists of three directors, three members. A one member, while coming to the meeting place, he met with an accident. And because of that, he is unable to reach the meeting place. But two members are present. As two members are present, the quorum is filled. So the meeting is considered as a valid meeting in the first case. For the first part of this point. Right. But now, now we have to focus on the second part of the point. And the second part of the point says that both the members, if three are the committee, three is the committee, strength of the committee. Audit committee is of uh, three members. One member, while coming to the meeting, he meets with an accident. And that member happens to be an independent member. Now, it will be assumed that the quorum is not full. And as the quorum is not full, the meeting cannot be considered as a valid meeting, even if the meeting has been conducted. And the reason is, although it says that if three members are there in the committee, any two member, if two members are present, the meeting can be considered as valid. But we have to understand now which two members. If an executive director is absent for a meeting and two independent directors are present for the audit committee meeting, it is said that quorum is full, meeting is acceptable. If one executive director is present, one independent director is present, the another independent director is missing, is absent due to any reason, then the quorum is not full then the meeting conducted between one executive director and the one independent director cannot be called as a valid meeting. Why? Because the quorum is not full. So we need to understand this difference also. Although it says that majority of the members should be present, but majority of the members should be from which side? From the side of executive directors or from the side of the independent director so we have to understand this this is very important that from the side of independent director majority of the members of the committee should be present for the meeting then only the quorum will be considered as full then only the meeting conducted by the committee will be considered as a valid meeting otherwise 
it will be considered as an invalid meeting. So that is related to the meeting of the committee. Now the next one. What is the function? What are the functions of the committee that uh, we will take up? That what are the functions of the committee? The first one, the recommendation for the appointment, remuneration, and terms of appointment of the auditor of the committee. Very important. Recommendation for the appointment of remuneration in terms of appointment of auditor of the company. When the company is finalizing the auditors who will be auditing the financial statements, all the documents related to preparation of those financial statements, balance sheets, who will be those auditors? That is to be decided by the audit committee. Their appointment is recommended by the audit committee. Then what should be their remuneration? That is also recommended by the audit committee. That for the purpose of audit, if we are engaging their services, in return, what remuneration the company will be providing to these auditors for doing audit for the company. That is also again decided by the audit committee. Then the important thing is terms of appointment. Terms of appointment for the auditor of the company. That all the terms and conditions what they need to check, how they need to check, who will be uh, having the custody of those financial documents, then to whom the report is to be submitted in case of any misappropriation found, who is the authority uh, which is to be uh, contacted. All these things is to be finalized, is to be decided by the audit committee. And last one, the most important is the tenure of the committee. Uh, sorry, our auditors. That whether the tenure will be of one month, six months, or what will be the tenure? Or 15 days, or two months, or three months. So the period of existence of auditor, again, is to be recommended, is to be decided by the audit committee. Next one, review and monitor the auditor's independence and performance and effectiveness of the audit process. Now, in the first thing, uh, first point we have discussed that terms and conditions and appointment of auditors. First is appointing auditors, then briefing auditors about the terms and conditions that what should be their role and responsibility, what is to be audited, how it is to be audited. Everything should be made aware to the auditor by the audit committee. It is their responsibility. But their responsibility doesn't end here. Ki okay, they have finalized the auditors. They have fixed their remuneration. They have briefed them about their role and responsibility as auditors. They have given every idea to the auditors that how the documents are to be checked, which documents are to be checked, document, uh, documents are uh, under the custody of which authority. So all these things are briefed, are shared with the auditors. And that is not, but that is not the end of the responsibility of the audit committee. The next responsibility of the audit committee is they have to review and monitor the auditor's independence and performance. That okay, they have started auditing, but whether they are going in the right direction or not, whether they are performing their duties impartially or not, whether they are independently handling these things or not, 
so that is again to be monitored and reviewed by the audit committee okay for the last one month you have done the auditors auditors have to prepare a report and place it before the audit committee what audit committee will do is audit committee will review audit committee will check whether the audit is going on as per the provisions laid down in various laws or not if not again they can remind the auditors that these are the problems which they which have been uh, occurred and they should improve upon these points right uh, so that is the uh, uh, responsibility of the audit committee uh, related to review and monitor so and monitor it is not a one time job that okay uh, we have checked the last 15 days audit report and we have suggested the corrections to the auditors and now auditors have understood all the corrections now there is no need to further monitor further review the process of auditing so that is it is a continuous in nature so it is uh, their job the, this monitoring has to be continuous next is examination of financial statements and the auditors report thereon their second responsibility is examination of the financial statements. Okay, auditors have done their audit purpose. All the documents have been audited. Audit report has been submitted. So, auditor's job is over. Even when the auditor's job is over, still the job of audit committee is not over. Their responsibility is, again, they need to examine the financial statements and auditor's report, whether it is correct or not. Is there any defect? in the uh, audit report which is submitted or is there any defect which has been overlooked by the auditors that is the responsibility of the audit committee and the last one is approval of any subsequent modification of transaction of the company with related parties if while auditing or while examining uh, the entire documents related to the financial statements where if the audit committee comes to know that certain statements certain documents were not checked these transactions were not checked again they can check those transactions and they have the authority to approve or reject those transactions These are some of the functions of, uh, these were some of the functions of the uh, audit committee. The remaining function we will uh, take up for discussion in the next session. So next time when we will meet, uh, we will be discussing uh, these uh, functions. The remaining functions, then uh, we will also talk about the role of audit committee, right? So thank you everyone.